This episode is brought to you by G-Tops. In the beginning, the idea of G-Tops was simply to let the light into your Jeep. Many Jeepers take their tops off. Freedom Tops make it easy and easy to store. What if you could let the light in every time you drive your Jeep? Rain, snow, sunny, it doesn't matter. That's G-Tops, letting you enjoy the view outside simply and easily. This episode of the Jeep Talk Show brought to you by Realtruck.com with over 1 million plus parts and accessories for your Jeep, truck, and life. Learn more about the best Jeep Wrangler lights on Real Source later in the episode. And the show is also brought to you by Glue Tread. Ever had a sidewall damage? With Glue Tread, you can repair the sidewall on any off road vehicle without ever removing the tire from the vehicle. With over 1,000 five star reviews, they're the only reliable sidewall repair solution on the market. You ever had a sidewall damage, uh, 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 Josh? I haven't gone off road enough, I think, to, to have sidewall damage yet. Uh, it could have happened yesterday while we were off road, but I stayed away from those mean looking rocks. There's been several times where I could have sworn that I was going to have just <laughs> torn that sidewall wide open, but yeah. thankfully, uh, no, I was managed to, to get around the obstacle and, and kept, the, kept the air where it was supposed to be. So Bill and, uh, Bill and John were, had been out there to the Hidden Falls several times to get ready for the event that we just had, and, and Bill comes on the radio and says, hey, John, that, uh, that rock moved. So he goes, that big rock I had trouble with? Yeah, he says, it's over on the other side of the trail now. Oh, geez. <laughs> well, luckily it didn't end up in somebody's front end. <laughs> so it's funny. You never know when people go out there what, how they're going to change the environment, change the trail. But I think that's kind of the, uh, kind of the fun of it. Well, I'm Tony, and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show, where we put the fun in off-road fun. Strap in, grab your favorite beverage, and get ready to laugh, learn, and have a damn good time. Man, I'm back in the saddle because I was told to, or else, it's your old pal Josh to give you that little something-something you've been missing all up in your ear holes. And uh, coming up in this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, Jeep is proud of their 8-speed transmission, but what is that 8th gear really for? <laughs> and friend of the show, Jim Morrison, is changing his role with Jeep once again. And this is like an unbuttered role, uh, Josh. Uh, I think you're aware of this, but we'll find out more about it uh, in your uh, your news story here in a bit. Uh, and uh, we're going to find out what Jim is up to uh, just uh, coming up. In our Jeep Gladiator update, I'll recap the fourth annual Jeep Talk Show event. I'll tell you about the test and review of the Motobilt Skid System and how we went coaching for the first time a JLU Wheeler. That sounds awesome. I can't wait to hear the details of that trip. And later in our must-have pick of the week for your Jeep armor like no other. Stick around and we'll get a first-hand recommendation from Tony himself. Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. Now, Josh, I don't think this is anything you've had experience with because your Jeep is an older Jeep. Uh, but uh, the thing that has struck me on several long trips, two EGS trips and uh, a few trips out to uh, uh, Hidden Falls. I mean, this is our fourth yeah. annual Hidden Falls trip. Uh, and I've been there uh, other times than just the event. I was noticing it uh, when I was driving out on Saturday. Uh, it's an eight-speed transmission, uh, and uh, I, I was turned. Uh, this is really wild. I mean, you probably are aware of this, but this is really wild from a couple of XJers, where you can change the center console, the dash, rather the dash display, to show oh, various yeah. things. You can move right. things you around. And, dashboards that you can bring up and, and different stats and, and yeah. menus and stuff that you can review while you're going. Yeah. So I found a way to turn on uh, what gear you're in. It's, I thought that was default. I thought that no. was always, there was a display always up in there. That no, you no, oh, not okay. at all. Well, it's always possible I could have turned it off accidentally before I knew what it was, but I don't think so. I remember actively looking it up and trying to figure out how to turn that on. So, and, and this is important because I noticed that if I can keep it in a high gear most of the time, the miles per gallon display really, really goes up very quickly. I've seen mm. 18 miles to the gallon on one of the EJS trips. This last not one I went to. Too shabby. It's really not for a modified Jeep. And, yeah. and keep in mind, this last time I went to EJS, I had that extra 250 pounds of skid plates uh, on the uh, on the Gladiator. So that was mm. a concern. Is it going to drop my miles per gallon? And it was uh, the 18, I think it was 18.1, 18.2 or something like that. So it wasn't the best gas mileage I've ever gotten on the Gladiator. 
uh, but it was uh, right up there, very close. Still, all things considered, gear and tires and everything else, you know? Yep, exactly. So <clears throat> my question is, what the hell is that eighth gear for? Because I don't see it. <laughs> I mean, the only time I see eighth gear is if I'm going downhill. It, it'll switch to eighth gear, and the uh, the RPMs on the uh, the three point six will drop from around twenty five hundred to about uh, two thousand uh, RPMs. And okay, two two questions in, immediately come to mind. First is: Is there a chance that the Taser Mini software is screwing with things even slightly? I mean, I, I don't think so. There's been several updates since I got it. Um, I'm just wondering if it's, if it's misdisplaying what gear you're in by one. When you're in seventh, you're really in eighth. When you're in first, you're actually in second. You know, it's just a, a glitch in the software, a glitch in the matrix, if you will. Well, I mean, I believe the the, the gear display is um, a Mopar or a Jeep. It's not Taser. It's not a, a Taser add-on. Right, but you're you're running the Taser software, right? Or you've got that that in play. It runs in con, uh, in conjunction with uh, the the Mopar yeah. software. So that's what I'm saying is just maybe there's something in there that got changed in the way it displays things. I know that the Taser gives you abilities to mess with the menus in the Jeep. There's I'm I'm just posing the question: Is there a chance that the Taser Mini is causing the misdisplay? If that's what it is. The only thing I can think that might be, uh, uh, would cause an issue is if the differential gear ratio was not set properly uh, with the Taser Mini or the tire size was not set properly. Uh, but if, if any, of those, any of those two were wrong, uh, then it means that uh, the GPS speed would not be I was the say, same I'd... speed as the speedometer. Yeah, I would figure that the, the speedometer display would be off more than anything, not the actual gear selection, because that's coming from a, a direct, directly from the transmission itself. No, no, it goes through the computer, and you can change it in the Taser Mini. So if you go to put uh, 456s or 488s, you literally go in the Taser Mini and tell it what it is. Uh, oh, nice. And that would change shift points, and to your point about the Taser Mini actually screwing up what gear you're in. I believe it's reading the right gear, uh, but okay. it's not... Um, but I'm not getting into the eighth gear. And that's my question yeah. is what kind of magic do you have to do to set up your, your Jeep where you can make it to the eighth gear? I mean, I'm running four tens uh, and, uh, and, and everything's set properly with the tire size. I think I even put the, the closest measured size in there, not 35, but 34 right. or eight or something, whatever it was for yeah. the Nexans. Well, that leads me to my second question then is have you ever had the Jeep over hundred miles an hour? Absolutely. You would have to be in eighth gear then, I would assume. I don't know. Pedal was on the floor. Dang. Pretty sure it was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was probably sixth gear. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Gotta get you the, I'll get the RPMs up, a little yeah. downshift there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and I wasn't paying attention to that. I was doing, a, I was well, passing. Uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> and I was more, I was watching that 18 wheeler coming at me. <laughs> JT on 35s, you're doing 102. You're, you're, oh, you're making sweet, sure you're in, in the you're supposed to be in. <laughs> It was not scary. I just, uh, I had glanced down and I was like a, at 105, 108 or something like that. And uh, Bill was driving his 392 and he can't do more than 99 because it's, it's capped. It governed? Oh, yes. The computer wow. caps it. And that I told him, I said, we, yeah, I was following Bill. And I said, hey, Bill, I just got up to 105, 104, whatever it was. I said, I don't guess I have that. Uh, <laughs> I guess yeah. I don't. I can go whatever hell speed I can go. <laughs> He's like, he okay. son I've of heard it. rumors about the, about the, the, uh, the, uh, the V8s being governed. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I, but yeah, I don't know. There's and and as far as I know, right talking there. about tasers, I don't think that you can uh, turn, uh, d disable that or change it uh, for the 392s. Wouldn't that be a pain in the ass? That'd be like having a supermodel uh, girlfriend you couldn't have sex with. Well, remember, we talked uh, uh, more than a year ago about uh, Jeep kind of leaning on this this pay-to-play type of platform <laughs> to where if you want these certain features out of your Jeep, well, guess what? You're going to have to subscribe and pay every month to use these things. So I'm, I bet you, I bet you there's something deep in some oh, menu yes. somewhere to where if you want to lock, unlock uh, over 99 miles per hour, well, uh, let's just say, Jeeper, you better empty every pocket. <laughs> mm -hmm. So back to the gear thing. I noticed that uh, seventh gear uh, does very well. I think it got up to like 15 uh, miles per gallon yesterday uh, morning heading out to uh, uh, to Hidden Falls. So it's about, about a three and a half hour drive out there. And uh, it, it started climbing up to uh, very quickly. And then I think I got the destination or I pulled off or 
uh, whatever, and uh, it, it, it just it didn't get any higher than that. Uh, but uh, I, I would just like to know what, what magic you have to do. I mean, it's the 14 gears are, are, are really nice, and well, it makes it really nice driving with the 35-inch tires, but, I mean, do I need 488s and 35-inch tires? Do I need... Because well, you have the tow max package, right? Yes. I'm wondering if this is something built into that. If there's in the tow max package, it defaults you to keeping in a lower gear just so you have a little bit extra grunt when you're towing. Well, now, obviously keep in mind, it does go to eighth gear. Yeah. But you have to be going but, downhill. Yeah. Is there a tilt sensor involved in here? <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I don't... Well, there's got to be a right gear and tire size setup. now, And, and I've also heard that weight uh, uh, will factor into this thing. Uh, but uh, this has been an issue from, uh, I, I don't really remember. Well, I didn't have the display on for the showing the gears whenever it was uh, mm. brand new in stock. Uh, so it was after I had done the, uh, the, the lift and the tires, but before the skid system. So, uh, and it's always been a situation where it, it drives around in, in seventh gear. So, and if you've got the right kind of wind or it's uphill, you're going to be in sixth gear and that's really going to hurt you on your miles per gallon. Well, now keep in mind, none of us buy a Jeep for miles per gallon, but oh if, God, but if, yeah, but if you can get better MPG out of doing something, especially if you're going to be making some modifications, I think you could take it into account that maybe maybe I need to go with the 488s or the 513s or whatever the five uh, the the five whatever gear is. So whenever you're going lower and numerically higher, there might be a, a an actual uh, fuel savings benefit. Well, I could see that for sure. I mean, just in the math and the physics behind it all. But I, I'd say this is where a call to action comes in, and and we need to to talk to the listeners out there and and just ba basically ask them, okay. What's your Jeep configured like? Have you ever seen eighth gear? You know, just give us the specs. And if it's a, if it's a thing where, well, it's like, yeah, I'm in eighth gear all the time, but I don't have the tow max package. Maybe that's the difference. Or maybe it's like I have 35s and I don't have the, the tow max package and I've never seen eighth gear as long as I've owned the Jeep. You know, maybe there's something into the tire and gear configuration or something. But this is where you, the listener, is going to come in. You need to let us know what, if you've seen that eighth gear and how your Jeep's set up. Yeah, I'd love to know. And some of you may have to turn on that, uh, the, the, what gear, uh, what gear, what, um, is it gear? No, what am I, what, um, yeah, what gear you're in. So, uh, you may be very happily driving around in seventh gear and not know it. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, and the other information I was going to give you guys is 70 miles an hour, uh, 2,500 RPM approximate. I'm not looking at it on a digital display. So about 2,500 RPM at 70, which, all in all is not bad, <clears throat> but it could be better. I mean, I really liked it when it dropped down to 2000 RPMs and driving go. 70 miles an hour. And you got to figure yeah. that's going to help out a little bit. Now, all of in, 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 I'm sure everybody's aware, these are um, uh, not oversized gears. What do you call them? Overdrive. These are overdrive. And I think seventh and eighth are both all overdrive gears. I think six is Would the one to one. Sense. Would make sense. Yeah. yeah. But it's nice to have a, an over, uh, at least one overdrive gear that I can get into and stay there. <laughs> well, especially on the long road trips, absolutely. Uh, and I did notice that it was a really easy, and I don't know that this is, maybe it has to do with wind. Uh, it was really easy to keep it in seventh gear at 70 miles an hour, uh, driving out to Hidden Falls about 4.30 in the morning. So I think the winds, there was no winds. and Air is uh, a little bit cooler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, of course, the air cooler would be denser. So, But anyway, yeah, mm. let us know what you, uh, what, uh, what you guys experience. And if you're in eighth gear all the time, uh, I will appreciate the information, but hate you at the same time. <laughs> well don't hate us we're just the messenger i mean you can blame us but it's probably not our fault okay maybe it's our fault but you can't blame us he did do an interview <laughs> with us <laughs> it's another end of an era as this show has been airing episodes we've seen jeep uh you know the actual jeep company change hands several times we've seen top level executives they've come and gone leadership roles changing hands and the list goes on and on jeep has definitely well had a big story to tell and the behind the scenes story of jeep is certainly one of many ups and downs but this latest change is one that at least i didn't really see coming yeah. and that's probably because well it's our fault well, at least <laughs> it could be i don't know after the word got out on a global scale that the head of the Jeep uh, brand for North America under its parent company Stellantis was associated with the likes of us here at the Jeep Talk Show, it didn't take long for the inevitable wave of change to wash onto the shores of Jim Morrison. 
At the end of 2023, Jim stepped down from his role leading the Jeep brand here in the States, making way for a guy who, well, he came from Kia, but most recently was the CEO of Maserati, also owned by Stellantis, so I guess they're hiring from within. Jeep still had a, uh, Jim still, rather, still had a role in the Jeep hierarchy, one I personally think that he was well suited for. Yeah. Jim spent the last year or so gearing up JPP, the Jeep Performance Parts Division. And if I do say so myself, I think he did a rather stellar job of bringing awareness and direction towards JPP. Now, earlier this week, however, it was announced that Jim Morrison will be retiring, leaving his long tenure in the automotive industry to hopefully spend more time out on the trails. As you may or may not know, Jim is an avid Jeeper, as he'd been here on the show and told us so himself. And hopefully we can get some of his time here in the near future to discuss what a retired, now, Jim Morrison will be doing now that he's no longer running a global brand. Tony, what do you, what do you think about Jim stepping down? Do you think that he's just going to call it quits, or do you think there's going to be a hiatus and something coming back? I, I don't know. It, this doesn't seem like a guy who just goes idle. Well... You mentioned it. He's he's a big Jeep fanatic, and I think he's going to continue to be a Jeep fanatic, even if he goes to work someplace else. And I can see that happening just simply because of his position uh, prior to being uh, moved into the uh, Jeep performance uh, uh, arena and uh, and now with the retirement. Um, I I don't want to see him working for somebody else, especially somebody that's right. a competitor to Jeep. But can you imagine some company that is very much interested in being uh, effective off-road and competing with Jeep, this it would be an excellent opportunity for them to get somebody that's been involved oh, in Jeep Christ. since 1995. Gonna, you think Ford is going to put a package enough attractive on the table for him to just be like, I do. okay? I do. That's where I was going with this. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, I believe they're headhunting out there. I, I, I'm pretty sure that there's been a phone call or two that he's received, but... I, I, yeah, I don't know. I can, I I can see, see GM pushing the Broncos. Like <laughs> Gosh, dang it. It sucks. It sucks. So, so can I, I can see well, it, but I just, it, it, it just, it grinds my gears. I'm I mean, sorry. if you've ever been let go of a company, you, uh, and, and you've done a good job for them or really busted your ass for them. And I think that's definitely the situation here with Jim. Oh, without question. And yeah. for whatever political reason or disagreement on how you, the company should move forward or anything, um, they they uh, end the, their relationship with you. You uh, want them to, at some point, if not immediately, understand that that was a mistake, that mm. you shouldn't have made that decision. For whatever reason you made the decision, you should have thought about it longer and not made that mistake. Well, you know what they say, hindsight's always twenty twenty. This isn't really hindsight in my mind. I, I'm, I'm not any, you know, any big deal inside of uh, Jeep. I don't know all the ins and outs. I do know that uh, Jeep has had um, sales issues for the past several years, and yeah. it's not uncommon for people, uh, higher ups, to be replaced because uh, you you have to do something for the the, the investors. Um, but I, I don't think this was a good idea. Uh, they either immediately know it, they or they immediately knew it before uh, before he retired, uh, or um, he uh, okay, or so they're going to know it soon if he goes to somebody else. It'd be funny so, if he was he went to Maserati and they started building four wheel drives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it would be funny. Um, so the the tone of what you're saying, and 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 correct me if I'm if I'm reaching too far here, reading too much into this, is that you think that Jim is forced out, that he's not doing this uh, naturally on his own accord, that it's like you need to step down. We're going to make it seem like you're retiring just to kind of save your uh, your reputation, but. Um, your services are no longer required. Is is that kind of the, the what you're you're hinting at? I have no uh, in, uh, ex internal or external information on this. It's just my guess. Uh, well, I think I think that he was uh, forced to take the job of the Jeep Performance uh, Arena, and uh, I think it probably didn't sit very well with him. And mm. uh, or maybe. It's fine. Yeah, this sounds good. I'll have more time with the family, more times to go off road, and I get to play with all the goodies, you know, from yeah. these vendors, you know, and uh, and and I don't think I'm I don't think I'm telling uh, out of uh, out of turn here, but uh, Greg Henderson was going to be talking to Jim about the door pockets that he's uh, that he's uh, coming out with. Um, right. So you know the nets that are on the inside of the yep. the, the, the they yep. sag so some plastic uh, uh, that are very much look like factory even has the um, the hash marks and stuff like it's in the plastic mm -hmm. from Jeep and it's yeah. Jeep specific hash marks so he's 
Greg's in bed with Jeep pretty heavily. And uh, he was going to be talking to Jim about getting a bunch sold to the Jeep performance. And now this is, this is gone. So I don't think that he was forced out. I think that Jeep wanted to keep Jim uh, as part of this because you can always go to that resource anytime you need to. Uh, I, I think Jim said, F this. <laughs> I don't need you guys. If you don't need me, I don't need you. I, I got yeah. enough money and I can go do something else oh, or, or just do nothing and play with Jeeps. So, um, no, I think I have no information, but I think that you're going to see Jim pop up with somebody else in a, in a major, major role. Well, there's no way that he's just going to go start selling Jeeps at a, at a dealership or something like, no, this is an upper level exec. I mm -hmm. mean, that that's what he, this is a six figure salary guy. This is maybe even seven, you know, uh, this is, this is not some Johnny come lately. They'll just drop into any job. Um, it will be an upper level executive position right. if he does come back into the automotive field. Um, and, and that's, that's a really, uh, I, like I said earlier, I, this is not a guy I can see going idle. And so, but everything that I've read about this makes it seem like this is a move that Jim is doing on his own. I court. think so. I think so. That, that this is a decision that he made that that he gave it some thought this is what he wants to do this is the direction that he's going now oh and to be no, honest no I, mean, I think what he wanted to do was work for jeep for the from here on out until he this was at retirement age and decided to get out of it but but that was not i think that things are changing at jeep i think they are going to more of a luxury uh ev market and not so boy, much the off-road it's funny you bring that up. There was, I don't know if we, do we have time? I kind of want to go down this little bit of a rabbit trail exactly yeah, on, sure, this, right on this topic. So I'm just I, I impressed reading, that you ask because in, in the past you just go <laughs> and we would go, they go, oh crap. Well, so, so what I, I, I read uh, something here recently about Jeep making that move and, and, and how, you know, there's this sort of writing on the wall. EVs aren't exactly doing as good as they can. We're expected as the government doing. expected. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> and, and Jeep didn't exactly go all in now. Now recently they, they just uh, announced they're going to be releasing a, an all electric uh, Wagoneer. It's going to be the Wagoneer S. Yep. And that I, is, I think it has more, been released. I think I, I, I saw yeah, that last week or so. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be available in the showrooms until in, uh, until this fall. Um, but uh, yeah, it is out. I think you can order it now, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the, the intended purpose of the Wagoneer S was direct competition with the, with the Tesla yeah. model S. I, 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 and, I didn't read that, but I suspected that based on performance. And, and so even though we've, we, we talked, uh, a few episodes back about an all electric, um, vehicle that Jeep is releasing in the UK, how it's not going to be seen here. Uh, we talked about sort of why that might be and everything. Mm -hmm. um, this kind of plays into that a little bit. Jeep is really focusing on going directly after Tesla. I mean, when you think about EV, the first thing that comes to mind is probably going to be Tesla. Sure. And when you think about a luxury um, electric vehicle, again, you probably go to Tesla. Right. Now, Jeep with the Wagoneer knocked it out of the park in the luxury segment Beautiful. right off the bat, right out of the, out of the yeah. get-go. The Wagoneer just was a, is an absolute head turner. It's a great um, bus. Paint it yellow. <laughs> it's got a lot of features. It's winning a lot of awards. Um, and a lot of other car makers are scrambling to try and figure out an answer to it. Um, and, and now with the direct competition with Tesla, I think Jeep is making the right move electrically. When, they, when we think about EV, we were scared that they're going to be going all in with all EV. The entire line is going to be shifting. I think they're actually reading the little bit of the, the bones in the sand, if you will, and are, are thinking, okay, we need to make a slight pivot here. And we, we, there's, the, there's the recon that was all EV that they're talking about. That's not exactly getting a whole lot of, uh, of traction. Um, th this Model S with the Wagoneer, direct competition with Tesla. We're going to see how that's going to do. Uh, it still has you know, four more quarters as far as sales go. $80,000. I think 74, you can get one trimmed down, but after, you know, lices and taxes and fees and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're, you're going to be into it 80 grand. Oh, and but, by the way, I don't know if you caught this or not. The recon, which is the all electric, smaller, uh, right. SUV, kind of like a, kind of like a, a, a an XJ sorta it's, it's boxy. So it's nice, but that was an all EV. Well, right. The, the, the new, uh, CEO of, uh, of the Jeep portion of it is saying, we may put it, may may offer a uh, I think I think they said a three point six at least a a, a nice uh, option 
So they're well, not going all EV on the recon. No, possibly that's, not. That's the direction I've been seeing. A lot of yes. a lot of the media that's been coming out of the Jeep camp is is that exactly. It's we've got a lot of powertrains that we're going to be offering, and while everybody else is going all in on this EV stuff. We've got this other stuff over here. We've got a partial hybrid EV. We've got partial battery electric. We've got mm-hmm. a bunch of combinations here. And so we've got something that everybody's going to be looking for. And I think that that's as all these other EVs, these other companies start going all in on the EV stuff, that Jeep is going to start climbing up and above and they're going to be setting themselves um, above been, and beyond all the others. I've been very impressed with how uh, Jeep is going towards the EV market. And don't get me wrong. We do not have the the battery capacity or the, yeah. the electricity generation we need for it to be, right. really be viable. Um, I, I do see, I, I can't remember if Jeep was looking at this or, or not, but you know how the locomotives are diesel electric? The diesel right. just, just generates electricity to exactly. charge the battery. The power, the, right. I can see Jeep possibly doing something like that. I like that better as a hybrid uh, than uh, the, the actual thing where you could drive all electric or all internal combustion engine. Uh, have the uh, have the internal combustion engine uh, idle, uh, not idle, run at its optimum uh, efficiency, charging the batteries. But then again, we circle back to how the technology is not quite ready for that. We don't have the the energy density in the battery technology to support that kind of uh, system. Well, if you're and if you're continuously yeah, if you're continuously charging it using uh, the fuel like gasoline or something. Now you you are going to get a range, and if you improve the efficiency, because I think the the uh, diesel electric lo- locomotives they need the torque uh, and the power from the electric, uh, but they right. need some way of of you know keeping the batteries charged. Or, or uh, I don't even know if they have batteries on there. They may be be going straight from the diesel into a generator into the electric motor, uh, which that's good too. Because now I mean uh, you can reduce weight if you're uh, running the the. Uh, I just, I, I, you know, you remember that show from like the late nineties, early two thousands, how it's made and they yeah. show you exactly how something, they I think just it's had still a on. With locom- oh, it is. No, it's still on. Yeah. I was just watching the episode last night uh, and they were doing locomotive building, but I wasn't paying attention. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's I'd like, like to I, see. I'm I gonna look that one up. Look, and I remember them talking about how they build these things, but well, dang you, it, I well, you know, that's battery. working <laughs> and you know that that's viable. I don't know if it's a size type thing. I don't know if you need a, 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 a really big motor and uh, a diesel engine to make it's gonna it look viable. like something out of Jay Leno's garage. You know, it's going to have 12 and a half feet of hood <laughs> before you get to the front bumper. Yeah. We, we no, have I, a lot of plutonium left over. I'm just saying, you know, it might be time to. <laughs> to go nuclear on our I've vehicles. I've been waiting for nuclear drivetrains since I was a kid. I mean, I I grew up watching the Jetsons. Come on, that stuff's supposed to be here by now. <laughs> we need more power. I don't know. I think Jim's going to be just fine, uh, but it, it, it pains me to know that we don't have somebody that I know to be a uh, uh, just an amazing Truth Jeep person. Just, yeah, right. That was know, a, with, without that kind of a person at the helm, I, I'm a little bit worried about the direction the Jeep brand is going to go. Right. Hopefully, he's sort of set the rudder and, and we can kind of continue going this direction for a while. Uh, and, and hopefully people don't start getting in the way of things. But yeah. what if his, worried, his worried belief and his eagerness about Jeep and off-road was the reason why he was moved into the Jeep performance and, and now that he's retired. Uh, he wasn't playing along. He wasn't the going I'm along wondering with the about narrative. that because the narrative is electric Gosh. and, and uh, yeah. you know, big vehicles. But, and, no, okay. I, I would, I would agree with you wholeheartedly if it wasn't for Carlos Tavares coming out time and time again and squashing the EV narrative that's going on right now. How saying that, I mean, he's come out multiple times. The, the, the infrastructure is not here. We are not ready. It, it, we should not be pushing this hard for, for these things to, to, to come into fruition at this time because there, we don't have the, the support behind it. He, he's very, he has pulled no punches in, in where his stance is with the, with the EV narrative. And so if it wasn't for the, the man himself, the top man at Stellantis coming out and saying that, hey, uh, all you people that are crying EV, you need to tone it down a little bit because it's not, it's not here yet. Um, I, I, would, I would agree with you, but, but he's out there, he's saying these things, 
And so I, I well, would he's got the job. <laughs> he may be yeah. he may be saying I it mean, after he got in, <laughs> or he may be saying it after looking at it with the information coming from internal uh, from Jeep. Yeah, I, I it's with with so much going on in in corporate hierarchy and and narratives that we know not to be true, but you know, it's say, hey, you know, we're being told don't believe your your lying eyes. Um. They have to think that 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 more intelligent heads will prevail, uh, and, and that uh, Man, you, you're really hopeful. <laughs> I know. I I, I always what is hope it? for the best. Is it but I red pill, forward. blue pill. Which, I I can't remember which one that you're not yeah. supposed to take. <laughs> uh, I'm taking the purple pill right now. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're pro Richard Simmons. Well, <laughs> I do live in Oregon. Everybody out here has purple hair. <laughs> Well, hey, let's talk about G-Tops really quick. G-Tops is a patented system that has been around since 2008. It's not a sheet of plastic that scratches across the width of your Jeep. Trust me, this is uh, not some just half-ass type of thing. It's a Freedom Top Plus. It's OEM Plus. G-Tops block 99% of UVA and UVB rays. That means your interior is not going to have that UV fade. And, hey, no skin cancer on the top of the ears, right? <laughs> or Made your head if you're bald. <laughs> <laughs> made of impact resistant acrylic like aircraft canopies it's just not going to break your neck like goose when you eject g tops <laughs> comes with snap-in sunshades that will stay in place even with the most aggressive off-roading so you know not have to worry about here can you hold this while i uh, do this other thing g tops comes with a five-year fifty thousand mile limited warranty how much does it cost well to have jeep tops installed in your factory freedom panels it's about 1200 bucks, and it's available for JKs, JLs, and JTs. If you want something like no else on the top of your Jeep, go to gtops.com. That's J-E-E-T-O-P-S.com today for more information. Um, Josh, do you remember the, the man that you were talking to about the, uh, the canopies that were for uh, the TJ way back when? Oh, yeah. Right. I remember that. That reminds me of the, of the G-Tops, not in quality or how it works, but... The, the ability to see clearly through uh, the, the top without having to take anything they off. They share a similar concept, but yeah. definitely far different function. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, and I think one of the things that people really get concerned about is the heat. So, uh, just got back from uh, from uh, the, the fourth annual Jeep Talk Show off-road event. It was mm -hmm. uh, 96 or 97 out at Hidden Falls. And uh, I have those shades that I could have put on. Never thought about it. It, it never well, was that it was, I was not getting a bunch of heat coming from, uh, the G tops. Uh, and so uh, I know some people have been concerned about that. Uh, I think it may be a little hotter, but nothing that I could, uh, say, Oh, this is, this is unbear unbearable. I got to put these shades in. Well, that's where a lot of the U the, the heat is generated by the UV. Exactly. Uh, a lot of it. And so when you're blocking all the, you know, 99% of UVA and UVB rays, uh, you're going to be blocking out a lot of that heat, but still allowing the light to come through. Yeah, it was a lot of fun just being able to see up and around things. And uh, fortunately, I, I didn't uh, lay it over on the side and have to use them as escape uh, devices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a bus. Yeah, <laughs> pull the handle. Uh, the great news about the G Tops is you can win uh, some of these for your Jeep exclusively here on the Jeep Talk Show. Listen oh, to look end. What we're doing for you. <laughs> Listen to the end for more inf for more inf uh, information and details on the G Top giveaway. Well, I'll be coming up here in just a little while, but uh, in the meantime, you gotta have good lighting on your Jeep, and ample lighting is essential. To any vehicle, especially when you're going off-road, especially like off-road centric applications, like for instance, the Jeep Wrangler. Whether navigating a dimly lit country road, a dark street, or pitch black trail in the dead of night, having vibrant headlights, taillights, accessory lights, and off-road auxiliary lights ensures you can safely navigate any terrain at any time in any condition. If you're looking to upgrade your Jeep Wrangler's factory lighting, well, you've come to the right place. In this guide, we're taking a, comp a comprehensive look at Jeep Wrangler lights, including the benefits of modified lighting, types of lighting, and our top recommended products in each category. So I didn't go for the $1,000 LED upgrade for the Gladiator, and those incandescent lights sucked. Yeah. So this is definitely something you want to do unless you're buying the, the big bright LEDs from, uh, uh, from Jeep. But uh, even though, these might be some better uh, options. So from the factory, your Wrangler's lighting is hardly sufficient on road. Uh, even the brand new JLs come with a standard dated uh, reflector beam style halogen headlights. 
Come on, Jeep. Uh, there are several benefits to upgrading your Jeep Wrangler's factory lighting, and in this section, uh, we're going uh, covering up the, the covering the top four. So you can read the full article at realtruck.com/blog. Just search for the best Jeep Wrangler lights, or look for the link in the show notes for this episode, episode 1058. You know, Tony asked the question up at the top of the show, have you ever had sidewall damage on your tires? Well, it's even worse when you've had it in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Imagine being on the trail, a thousand miles from anything, anywhere, and all of a sudden that root or rock just goes ahead and, well, decides to aerate your tire. Glue Tread allows you to repair the sidewall of your off-road vehicle in just a few minutes without removing the tire from the vehicle. Glue Tread sidewall patches are designed to be a temporary repair, but can stay on for hundreds of miles getting you right back to where you need to be, get you back to safety. Blue Tread has, a, has slashed all four tires and repaired them with just one kit on the Rubicon Trail. If you can get off the Rubicon, well, then you can get out of anything. Blue Tread's most popular kit is just 24 bucks, money well spent to have in the glove box. Blue Tread's newest kit, the Expedition Kit, is a practically, practically a spare tire itself and comes with everything you need for sidewall damage, emergency valve stem replacement, and even plugging a puncture. It comes with T-handles and a Cordura bag, both made in Montana. So, made in the USA. Save 10% with code JeepTalkShow10. But remember, this is for off-road use only and for recovery only. Don't want to make sure you're uh, using this to, you know, get to and from work every day. Mm -hmm. But you can get you off the side of the road if you need to. But even better, Jeeper, you can get an even bigger discount from Glue Tread by using the Patreon subscription. You subscribed at a $5 or higher level here with the Jeep Talk Show on Patreon. Well, you can get access to this better discount and many more from Glue Tread and others. Gladiator. My name is Gladiator. Gladiators. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Gladiator. <laughs> oh, that was oh, abrupt. I cut short too. <clears throat> uh, little software modifications there upcoming in future episodes. So um, uh, it just amazes me, you know, Josh. You, you put together these great intros, uh, all, but, uh, the, 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 and then you go and drop the ball. Yeah, isn't it amazing? <laughs> <laughs> and isn't it amazing how how much cooler they are with video on top of them? It's almost like a oh, professional yeah. dang deal here. Like we know what we're doing around here. I swear and, to God. and if you don't know what I'm talking about video wise, we're on YouTube, so you can watch this episode on YouTube and all the other episodes that we've done recently. Uh, you can go and see what's going on uh, instead of, uh, you know, just listening to us. But we're, we're still doing the audio only because it just, uh, I think that's a lot more convenient. But you can, you can do both. You could listen to the audio only or you could uh, tune in to our YouTube channel. <clears throat> All right. So the fourth annual Jeep Talk Show Off-Road event has come and gone. You know, it's, it's sad. Um, I it's, know. I didn't get an invite this year. You're always invited, Josh. <laughs> we had a good group and several new people attending this year. Uh, we had uh, one brand new to wheeling, uh, a brand new wheeling Jeeper. She was concerned. Well, welcome aboard, Jeeper. Yeah, she was concerned about damaging her Jeep, JLU. <clears throat> and, uh... oh, okay, hang on. She was concerned about damaging her Jeep JLU or holding us up, you know, because she didn't know what to do. She, oh, you know, sure. Yeah. I, I, no, need, help. I need help. I need help. I need help. But we're, we're, yeah. I love having newbies out there. Uh, and and we, mean, we mean newbie in a positive way. So I told her, because we were chatting on uh, Instagram uh, direct message, I told her not to worry about that. Come on out and she will be with the easy to mid group. Now, John, John Lee, uh, he was the trail leader for the easy to mid group. Uh, spent a lot of time assisting her. Um, that well, was she was bone stock Jeep. I mean, get, yes. paint the picture here as far as what kind of Jeep she was driving here. Yeah, no modifications. It was a Sahara, so it had those uh, plastic running boards on it mm -hmm. even. So, okay. uh, and, that, and you know, you don't normally need the rockers out there. It, it, the, the easy trails and stuff, it's just some, some really some moderate things. Uh, okay. I, I did use my uh, my rock uh, rock sliders and uh, especially the skid system, but I wasn't going all the places that everybody else was going. Um, but and that's the thing. The other thing you guys need to know: just because we're going off road doesn't mean there's not bypasses or an easier route uh, up. Uh, it, it, there could be a, just a complete bypass, 
or there can be uh, variations of the the climb up. It it could be something that you know you need a buggy for, uh, something that you need uh, a little uh, modification modifications on your Jeep to do, and then uh, maybe one that's really easy. And then there's a bypass. So Tom, sometimes there's three choices that you can make, including the bypass. Mm. <clears throat> so John spent lots of time assisting her, and that included helping her get uh, her Jeep and four wheel drive. She did it. She tried doing it herself, but she got on the the GMRS radio and says. Uh, please help me because I, I'm not in four wheel drive. So uh, I remember putting the Gladiator in four wheel drive for the first time, and it was hard to get that shifter to move. I mean, I thought I was going to break something. I was pulling on it so hard. Was it was it just like it was stuck, or was it like kind of like in the older uh, Jeeps where you get that Z gate linkage to kind of bind up and it just won't move? I I don't know, man. I pulled on that handle and it, it's at a at, at a nice angle and a nice big grip. And I pulled yeah. it, and I pulled it, and I, I was, I mean, I was kind of jerking on it, trying to get it up. And then eventually I just put my, put the mustard to it and pulled it up and it went in gear. Now, I think that uh, it helps if you're moving, like, just like two or three miles an hour, a little yeah. bit, uh, for it to, to change. And also, too, it was probably just really tight because it's uh, brand new from the factory. I don't have mm. problems getting it into a uh, four-wheel drive anymore. It's not, uh, it doesn't stick like it stuck the first time. Uh, and you know she hasn't had hers in four-wheel drive. <laughs> There's no reason for her if yeah. she hasn't been off-road. So uh, I, I suspect it was just because it was new. I don't know if it was a 2024 or not, but it was. it definitely was a very pretty Jeep. So, um, Louis, uh, or I'm sorry, Luis, <laughs> he's a kid mad, <laughs> had a Rubicon Gladiator. Uh, I believe he's been out every year uh, that we oh, have awesome. been there. Yeah. Nice, never nice. see him on Discord, never see, really see him in anything online, but boom, there he is. He but he's at the over, event. Yeah, he Love goes over and says, says, says hello, uh, and uh, I will use him as the barometer for what I'm going to go do. Uh, as, oh, in, in past uh, past years, he would go do things that uh, that I didn't do because I didn't want to take the the possibility of damaging the Jeep. Uh, but and, you guys are set up similarly, I'm guessing. Well, not really, but the, and that's kind of good. He has a similar lift. Uh, I think he also has 35s, uh, but his is a Rubicon. Okay. So I figure if we're about the same and he has uh, has a Rubicon and he can do it, I should be able to do it too. So the the cool thing this year, I got a full skid system. So I, I'm like, yeah. I, I want to go. I'm I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. yeah I'm gonna do some stuff because I'm not worried about damaging the underneath, uh, catching something, some low hanging fruit, and then uh, being down. So uh, I was following him uh, as I do a lot of times. We we kind of angle up there where uh, he's in front of me, <clears throat> and uh, it was funny. He had a GMRS radio going, but he wasn't talking on it. Uh, I would say, you know, somebody on the GMRS would say, hey, Tony, you going to try it? You going to try it? You know how they do. And I said, yeah. I, I said, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to see if Luis is going to do it or not. And then Luis sticks his hand out the, the driver's window and points at the thing like, I'm going to like, attack that. He's <laughs> calling his shots. Yes. Home run right here. <laughs> <laughs> so he went up and then I went up. And I got to awesome. tell you, I don't know uh, when he was using lockers or not. But uh, the the max tow package on the Gladiator has a limited slip in the rear, and Perfect. normally normally speaking, I don't really put much onus in limited slip, you know. Uh, but I'm just amazed at how well that Gladiator will climb yeah. up stuff. And I was doing stuff that people with lockers, I don't know if they were using them, people with lockers uh, were doing with some difficulty, and I had some difficulty too uh, on s some of the more um, uh, aggressive uh, climbs. Okay. Uh, in fact, it was pretty funny. Uh, I, I it, and I would kind of giggle every time I would hit something with that skid system because it's like, yep, yeah, that's what it's there for. I don't have to worry about it. It's I'm just going up. Doing its job. So, uh, uh, Greg from uh, uh, unof not unofficial um, underground graphics, uh, he has a fairly well built 2020 Gladiator, a four and a half right. inch lift. That's uh, a gray one, right? Uh, yes, I was saying it was green uh, earlier uh, to somebody else. But it is. It's gray with yellow, a lot of yellow yeah. graphics on it. It's really right. Beautiful rig. Nice job, yeah. And uh, he went up a, a, a fairly, I would say, is a very aggressive uh, track uh, as we were going to um, um, Wildcat, Wild, Wildcat Mountain, the Wildcat Lookout, I think is right. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but in years prior, he kind of took it a little more conservative with that vehicle. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he was always doing more than me. Uh, with it, but he's had a lot of work done on it. 
Uh, okay. In fact, he just had a four to one uh, Rubicon transfer case put into it. Nice. Uh, that he just got it back uh, earlier this week, early er, early in the week uh, for the uh, the event. So he was being a little careful with it because he wanted to. Uh, he didn't want to just go out there balls to the walls uh, with uh, the, the the new changes. I don't know what, all, everything else that was uh, that he did, but he's on oh, thirty nine. So I'm sorry. Kind of a shakedown run for him on this one. Yes, it was. Uh, so oh. he's on he's on thirty nines, uh, and uh, uh, he's got now he's got that four to one uh, Rubicon uh, transfer case in it. And I don't know what, all the things he that he's had done to it. He's still on the the same Dana forty four axles. But anyway, he went up this thing, uh, and I was like, well, and the 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 thing that was kind of scary was he was getting kind of close to the top, and the gladiator starts rolling backwards. Not a, not fast, but enough where he lost his ability to go forward, and he like he mm. took his foot off the gas, and it kind of rolled back. And I thought, man, do I want to do that? I said, well, I'm just not going to roll backwards. Uh, so uh, he goes, he makes it just fine, and then uh, I go up there, and um, it start. I, I kind of get stuck. I'm hearing the, the you know the skid plate and everything else, and I kind of it doesn't really want to make forward progress. And I said, I'm not rolling backwards. So I gave it the gas. Oh, send it. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard a guy on the on the CMRS. He goes, "Give it the beans." <laughs> and there you go, a little skinny pedal. And there Jumping was over. there was debris and chunks and rocks. I could tell that yeah. it was just going backwards behind you know through the, from those tires. And oh, then I got up. Tail. I got up over there on the top. It, it really wasn't a big deal. And uh, I got on the GMS radio and I said, oh man, I hope I didn't pelt anybody with, uh, with rocks and boulders and stuff. And uh, Bill came on there. He goes, you were, you were throwing some pretty good sized rocks. Oh. <laughs> well, this is one of the reasons down here. <laughs> that's one of the reasons why you don't follow close. You, you yeah, need, because yeah. number one, you don't want to get rolled back on. Uh, and uh, the other thing too, is there may be some debris coming your way. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know if that's proper wheeling or not, but I didn't really care. I I, I was making that I was gonna you know, make that run all the way up, and I did. So that was a lot of fun. I got to do things. Uh, well, I shouldn't say I got to do things. I did things this year that I've never done before, and it was because of that skid system I put on there because that gave me the confidence to do these things and not have to worry about uh, uh, at least as much getting damaged to the uh, to the Jeep and not being did able you, to make it home. Did you find yourself? correcting your line selection nope like no i don't i don't have to go there i can actually go here instead because i'm not worried about no. scratching things up or whatever i don't think i have enough uh, seat time to pick my own lines yet so i'm okay. just following the gladiators okay. that are in well, gladiator or gladiators in front of me if they make a really yeah. bad decision i might pick a, a different line <laughs> <laughs> one would hope yeah <laughs> So I kind of learned my uh, learned my lesson at uh, EGS a uh, year before last whenever I was picking well, my so own it, line. <laughs> it sounded like you were on some more advanced terrain. Did you did you split paths with the with the first time off roader that you were talking about in the beginning of the, of the yeah. segment? Did yeah, yeah. Well, this is what I'm saying. Oh. There's usually more than one. Uh, you've been out there. There's more oh, than yeah. one uh, way to get up the the obstacle. I mean, there's like virtually no obstacle. There's like a uh, in some places there's like a mid level obstacle, and then there's the the really advanced one buggy type stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so I certainly wasn't doing buggy type stuff. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, no the 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 first timer she was right behind John Lee. So John Lee would say, "Just follow my tires. Just do the same thing I'm doing." And then at nice. one point he goes. He goes, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. I went the wrong way. <laughs> Don't go that oh. way. Because <laughs> he was just driving, you know, knowing, uh -huh, what, his, yeah. knowing what his rig could do. <laughs> I know at one point there was some rock stacking. And mm. uh, we, we sat for a really long time. And I think it had to do with him trying to get her up and over an obstacle. It wasn't a uh, major gotcha. obstacle. But uh, by the time we got up there, uh, it was pretty funny because it was kind of like, a, I, mean, I guess I would call it a bypass it was kind of a windy type thing where you had to turn a pretty good, not 90 degrees, but pretty, pretty far to the left and then okay. pretty far to the right. And, uh, I was behind, uh, uh, Greg and his, uh, his gladiator and there was a much, well, I don't want to say much easier going forward. The straight forward was going to be a lot easier than trying to twist that long gladiator through that stuff. It could be done. So he started going and there was a pretty good step down on that, uh, that route. 
and uh, he went through it, and it was he really didn't have a problem. He went slow. He, you could see him dropping down pretty hard uh, because it was a pretty good drop. And uh, I said, "Screw it, I'm just going straight." And I uh, I turtled uh, on it. Oh. And Did the, you have to come get a get a shove or get a yank? No, I told the guy behind me. I said, "I'm going to back up." <laughs> so he got off my ass, yeah. and I backed the f up. <laughs> and then I I hit it a little harder uh, to get it down. Go. And it's funny. I can see a swirl type pattern on the skid up around the engine. Uh, where oh, I where think, you were actually yes. turtled. You were full yes. on yeah. high center. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I made it down, and uh, it, it was just it's just it's such a cool feeling. To be able to make that forward progress and also yeah. too when you're doing something that uh, a better built uh jeep gladiator uh was was having problems with but you accomplished the same thing and, and uh, greg doesn't have skid system so the height mm. and uh, both the height for the tires and and uh his body lift or his uh, suspension lift uh certainly uh, helped him and it would be too but i i really like having those skids on there i really really like it it's just so such no a, buyer's remorse, no... Uh, absolutely no not. Okay. No, okay. I, I love those play? things. I, I don't know where you're at with warranty or anything like that, but is that going to come into warranty or service packages or anything? Is there going to be any uh, any problems there? Only thing I can think of, I don't think there'd be any warranty issues. Only thing I can think of is whenever they, because uh, I got more free oil changes, is when they go up there and uh, they're going to take the plug out of the oil pan going... Where is it? There's there's this metal in from him away. It's got a little uh, door with uh, three uh, countersunk uh, bolts oh, that okay. you have to take out. So I'll be checking to make sure the door gets put back. And it's not a swing yeah. down ro- door. It's a complete removal. Gotcha. So uh, as I was saying, it was just so much fun doing several more obstacles I had ba- bypassed in the past. Past Making it up and over is a great feeling. Now, circling back to the first time we were at our event, I Did you spoke, scare the living crap out of her? Or oh, what? I'm sure she was. <laughs> <laughs> but I spoke with her after we had uh, completed the run for the day of around 3 p.m. Okay. Yeah. And she loved her first time off-roading. Oh, right And on. was good shocked job. at how well both she and her Jeep did. Well, very good, man. She, That's awesome. I mean, I, we've, we've said it. We've been saying it for years, Tony. We've been doing this since, what, I mean, 12 years now or, or better. Um, you know, a stock Jeep. And, I, and honestly, it doesn't matter if it's a 30-year-old stock Jeep or a 3-year-old stock Jeep. They are very capable yes. uh, in, in completely stock form. And most people are, especially if this their first time wheeling, uh, oftentimes very, uh, very overwhelmed as to ha- just how capable the vehicle it really is. Mm-hmm. It was wonderful to see and the smile on her face and uh, that she didn't just hate it. I'm never doing this again. She's, she's in. And I told her about our Discord server that she could come over because we love spending other people's money on modifications. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully she, uh, she took your advice to heart and, uh, gonna, and, and ha- have a new, uh, a new listener to the show, a new fan of the show. And, and if nothing else, at least to give her an opportunity to uh, have another venue of uh, information to get her going in the right direction when it comes to modifications and things like that. Yep. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And you guys talked about removing trash from the trails. And uh, here in North Carolina, every year, a local hunting club has a uh, squirrel competition where you go out in the woods, you hunt squirrels, and whoever squirrel. comes back with the squirrel. most weight of squirrels <laughs> wins. But uh, they not only count the weight of squirrels, but you can count the weight of trash that you bring out. Oh. And uh, one year, a guy won it that did not shoot not one squirrel, but he brought out a bunch of trash with with him. And I I always thought that would be a good idea for a Jeep club to have some competition, see who can get the most amount of trash off the trail. Well, that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to tell you that. As everybody knows, this week I'll be in Maggie Valley at the uh, Maggie Valley Jeep Invasion, and I booked my hotel, and they wanted to charge me $10 more for air conditioning. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> that was a stinker. Let's see if we could do better. I was walking through the woods, and I saw a beehive that didn't have an exit hole. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. Oh, that one's not better, but I think that's the best it's going to get. All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later, and you have a good one. Bye. Oh, 
oh. better when, uh, for the shows that I'm on. I just got to say, it's kind of phoning it in there, Nikki G. Check the box uh, with or without bed bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, on this week's interview episode, which is tomorrow, Natalie with High Lift Off-Road. Uh, she is a host on Jeep talk show Chick Chat and uh, is also going to be our guest here on this interview. Oh, Learn nice. more about nice. Natalie and High Lift Off-Road. Well, earlier we talked and uh, teased, if you will, about the uh, possibility uh, of you winning a set of G-Tops, modifying your Freedom Tops. All you need to do is listen to the roundtable episode live or more later and get this week's question. We're going to post a question. You need to get that question and then go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact with that question and then click the link that takes you to the form that you must fill out completely to be entered to win. That's really it. It's just listen to the show, find the question, go to the website, click the link, enter it in, bada bing, bada boom. Bob's your uncle, you're entered to win. This is your last week to enter, your last chance to get in and, and have a chance to win a set of Jeep Tops. Chance to win a set of Jeep Tops, modifying your Freedom Top. This is a big deal. This is a huge giveaway. So go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, get that link ready, familiarize yourself where that form is, and then listen to this week's uh, roundtable discussion, uh, either live or afterwards, and uh, enter that question over at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Good luck, Jeeper. I am so looking forward to uh, announcing a winner and them getting their G-tops and interacting with us on what they think about them uh, uh, oh, personally. Yeah. Everybody that has seen the G-tops in, uh, in my Gladiator is amazed, and this is including Greg Henderson and Greg Henderson, the SEMA car builder, uh, yeah. is amazed at the quality. That's a, that, that's a tough audience to, uh, yes. to impress, by the way. Yes. So. And I was nervous about sending him my, my G-tops to be, uh, I mean, my, uh, my freedom panels to be cut open because if it's not a good product, now you got freedom tops with a big ass hole in them. Yeah. You can, <laughs> a little bit of a extra ventilation there, if you will. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure the G-tops would be in them, but if there's leaking or if it gets extremely hot during the summertime, there's always uh, all these concerns that you have. Oh, yeah. you know, it can't be all that good, right? Because everybody would be doing it. Nope. Wrong. Man, they are excellent. Had them for uh, had uh, uh, G tops for EJS that made it a lot more interesting and fun. Uh, and uh, here recently, I mean, we've gotten a lot of rain. There are no leaks, uh, and uh, it, it was it was just a blast being out to this uh, uh, fourth annual Jeep Talk Show event and being able to see up. And nope, it was not hot on me. It may have been a little hotter, I don't know, but I didn't notice it, and that's the point. So and even so, you've got the shade panels to snap in, and uh, yeah, and that that's a non-issue then at that point. So. Yeah, very, very much. Very, I'm I'm just really happy I got this one, and uh, I'm going. And they also, uh, Josh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but they have a panoramic for the the main hatch. Ooh, so from nice. almost from one side to the other. Yeah, you can have that's a cool panoramic view, and uh, it, you know, it may take me a little while. But I'm getting that because I want the whole, the, the full uh, G-Top experience. Well, nice to have some options anyways. Yep, it is. All right, and our must-have stuff for your Jeep. Now, I've talked about these before, but at the fourth annual Jeep Talk Show Offered event, Texas, uh, I have to talk, to them, talk about them again. Skid plate system for Jeep JT Gladiator, $1,649, which is a god-awful amount of money to me, but apparently not so much for some of you guys out there buying uh, $2,000 in shocks uh, for, your, for your Jeeps. So this is a four-piece full skid plate system, steel, not aluminum. I'm not picking on you. If you like aluminum, you wanna, there, yeah. Yeah, if you want to do aluminum, that's fine. Uh, god be with you. Uh, it is a very easy install but maybe too heavy for a single person to lift, yeah. hold, and get that first bolt started. <laughs> That's really the biggest thing is getting that, getting one of them started. That kind of holds everything else up there. But yeah, at the very <sighs> least, if you are going to try and do this yourself, you got to have a good set of floor jack. Yeah. At least one of the floor jack. Yeah, and, and be, uh, be prepared to mess up that paint that you put on there because I did it with a floor jack and a blanket on top of the thing, and it still messed up the paint. <laughs> I know, it's a skid system. The paint's going to get messed up. But still, you know, you want it to be nice for a little bit. So um, now, uh, it, like I said, it, it, this is all steel, not aluminum. It is a very easy install. Uh, now, I will tell you that if you have a Sport, a Sport S, or something that isn't a Rubicon Gladiator, you may not have all of the nut certs or threaded holes necessary 
for the exhaust side skid. I was able to mount all the, the belly pan, the engine uh, and transmission, and the gas tank one, no problems whatsoever. Just, you know, getting it up there after painting it was mm-hmm. the difficult part. And, and all the bolts um, that go in there, they're, everything is smooth. It is so nice and smooth underneath there. Uh, think of a boat and think of something smoother. Um, so, uh, but I had to take the, uh, take the gladiator over to, uh, Zach's, uh, Zach's business, uh, off, uh, off road unlimited. And he was able to weld in the bungs, uh, that were, that I needed to get, get all the mounts for that, uh, exhaust side skid. And, um, the bungs were included and I'll say it again. I like saying bungs. It's just cool. Um, so, uh, if, but if you have a, a, a Rubicon, you probably don't, you probably all have everything you need threaded and you can do this in the driveway at home. So my Sport S uh, had to have those bungs welded, uh, and uh, but it was very quick to do. And uh, wheeling with the skids gave me the additional confidence to hit harder, at least harder for me, obstacles at our event. I was not disappointed and kind of giggled at the scrapes, cr- crashes that happened. <laughs> also available for the JL, JLU, and Diesel Gladiators. Check it out at motobuilt.com. And I, I'll just mention again, is uh, the skid plate system for the Jeep JT Gladiator or the JL or the JLU. And look on there. They may have it for uh, earlier model Jeeps too, but those are the ones I was looking at. So um, check out, uh, check again, check it out at motobuilt.com. And I'll just mention, Motobuilt is a Jeep talk show Tony approved product. I've got several of their products and uh, is, they got really nice stuff, very well built and beefy. Beefy. Mm-hmm. Ah, crap. We went and pulled a bill and we ran out of gas. Well, looks like that's the end of the trail for us today, Jeeper. But that doesn't mean the fun has to end for you. Jeep Talk Show has at least four episodes a week now. And if you don't want to miss out on our interview shows, roundtable discussions, or even the chick chat, be sure to subscribe right now. And speaking of subscribing, consider keeping the Jeep Talk Show on the air by subscribing to the show via Patreon. Ready to hit the trail with us? The place to go for all the information, how to subscribe, and how to contact us is all at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. We'll Josh, see you there. you know what I forgot to mention? Uh, the Jeep Talk Show is running a 30% off deal for Patreon subscribers right now. You, can, you can become a Patreon subscriber uh, for $3.50 a month. Uh, it's for a limited time and a limited number of people. Uh, and if you want to lock in that rate, subscribe for the full year and you'll get the, the Jeep Talk Show for three fifty a month for the entire year. And that will actually pay for itself with the discounts that you get at all of our uh, uh, network of retailers. Yes. Use the Jeep Talk Show as intended. Read all instructions before using the Jeep Talk Show. Use of the Jeep Talk Show beyond its intended purposes may be dangerous. The Jeep Talk Show is not meant to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease, especially that rash you got from Tony that one time. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> frequent application may, may cause a rash. Just use more, uh, more of the lotion. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcasting since 2010. You're my friend. You're my new friend.